The Valve and Museum has strange properties that can allow you to fly around by pushing it up into your head's collision. It can also float in place when set on this platform. The release version of Boneworks had a few flight bugs such as spamming the jump button in slow motion. and lifting the pallet jack while standing on it. Opening the Steam VR menu effectively pauses the game. This can be abused in a few places such as Tower, where a green key is stored on the opposite side of this wall. If you pause, walk forward in your play space, and stick your arm out, you can sometimes get your hand on the other side to grab the key and unlock the door. The monomat in early versions of the game is very broken. Inserting ammo into any monomat has a chance to send you flying across the map, but it most commonly occurs when you use the inventory menu. There are three collectibles in the game that have randomized spawns. These are the golf club, which has a 2% chance of spawning out of any raffle box in streets, the sign baseball, that has a 10% chance of spawning in the museum gift box or the statue box in streets, and the baton, which has a 10% chance of spawning out of either gift box in the sewers monument. Weighted buttons like the one in Dungeon can be activated by dropping two or three magazines onto it. The secret staff room in the museum is usually unlocked by archiving all items at the beginning of break room, but you can also unlock it by skipping the sequence entirely. There are a few ways to clip through walls and get out of bounds. The easiest way is to move in between two static objects and crouch to get shoved out on the other side. This can be useful to get out of bounds in sewers or skip the green key in tower. Another, more difficult way to get out of bounds is with the gun glitch. If you let go of a gun at the same time as the magazine release animation, you can get it into a glitch state that allows you to clip through thin walls and corners when it's stored in your inventory. The pressing machines found throughout the game can actually move, but they don't do anything special outside of going up and down. Bottles have unique names such as Rocket Juice, Studio 5 Super Brew, Constructionist Vodka, Grandpa Gohan's 4-Star Whiskey, Swanky Wine, Stinky Scotch, and Night Ale. The big array of monitors in Central Station can be moved, but the ones in Tower cannot. The physics tick rate setting under graphics does not actually work. The game automatically adjusts the tick rate to whatever your headset's refresh rate is set to. All of the cutscene levels will softlock if you hit the skip button before letting the cutscene video start. You can also prevent the cutscene video from playing by constantly looking away from the giant display. If you do happen to softlock during a cutscene, there is an invisible level load trigger beneath the level that you can take. Pressing this button in break room will cause arms to drop down from the ceiling. There is hidden text up this wall in break room that reads, not this way. The wall on the opposite side has a section without collision that you can use to climb out of bounds. If you go exploring out of bounds in break room, you can see an extremely basic layout of streets. But, if you enable some objects in Unity, you can see more remnants of streets. This display cube and museum contains a few physics objects that get shoved out or stuck in the ground. One of these physics objects is invisible and can be found using the dev manipulator. The grip points on this object make me think it's the end table, but I'm not entirely sure. The giant Apollo behind this barrier and museum can actually be moved. There's also a set of monitors that spawn inside of this collisionless platform. All barrels in early versions of the game had the arena loophole which means that you could get a few unique items before intending. You can reclaim some items early in the museum by blocking this gate with an object and carrying items back to the reclamation bin. 
If you shoot these weighted balls all the way to the back of the firing range in the museum, a message will appear that says, you win. You can get the balloon gun in the museum by putting it in your inventory and dying in these lasers. Then, once you respawn, you can make your way back to the reclamation bin and reclaim it. There used to be two balloon guns in the museum, one in the anti-gravity room and the other in the bone box leading up to it. What's strange is that this bone box was replaced with the turret collectible, which was already available in streets. The tutorial TVs in museum can have their antenna removed. The control knobs can be turned as well. The you are here point on the back side of the map in museum is placed in the wrong spot. In earlier versions of this physics puzzle in streets, there used to be no additional scaffolding, meaning you had to climb up the rope in order to continue. Earlier versions of streets had an indestructible bone box hitting out of bounds. There is a vent hidden in the upper corner by this train cart in streets that leads into the turret room. If you're skilled enough at jumping, you can take this vent and skip the blue and yellow keys. You can skip the yellow key in streets by aggroing the null body on the other side of the yellow key door and standing where the button is on the other side. It will eventually hit the button, allowing you to enter. There is a black Mesa mug hidden at the back of the Stress Level Zero offices in streets. When the mug is broken, its textures get swapped back to the default monogon one. This section in runoff used to be completely empty in earlier versions. Omni projectors didn't spawn, and there was no collectible, which makes me wonder why it originally existed. Taking ammo out of this crate in runoff will sometimes cause the crate to slowly glide across the floor. The graffiti on the outskirts of runoff was added as either a nod to an old speedrun route, or because you could access that area through a collisionless building next to the first reclamation bin, but I like to think that it's because of the speedrun route. This wall outside of the intended area in runoff has broken collision. If you line your hand up in just the right spot, it can send you flying across the level. You can skip the anti-gravity barrel section in runoff by climbing up these boxes and over the fence in the area before. In earlier versions of sewers, two yellow keys were placed in the same area, one on a shelf and the other on the floor. If you look up this pipe in sewers where the Nullman dropped down from, you can see an eye looking down at you. Sewers receive some lighting changes which, when compared with the release version of Boneworks, is much darker. The purple key tunnels contain a gated door with a lock that doesn't need to be broken. You can open the door, and the lock will stay in place. If you look at the warehouse level in Unity, you can find one of the rooms used in an early teaser for Boneworks. If you look through these windows in Warehouse, you can see a few shipping containers and a train cart floating out of bounds. You can also see a slow motion target if you skip getting on the train and look through this gap. The purple key room in Central Station has an invisible magazine sitting on a table. If you view the magazine through the game window, however, it is visible, so it's just not being rendered in the headset. The monitor in Central Station observing the subway gate is not actually a live feed. The train map isn't shown, and moving objects around makes no difference on the screen. The floor beneath the glass in the Hover Junkers area and tower does not have collision, and you can fall right through. This is not the case in earlier versions of the level. In early versions of Tower, the party room did not have strobing walls or reflective spheres. You can move the bomb in Time Tower by slotting a gravity ball with the gravity staff and moving around while it's still attached. If you let go of the staff, the bomb will gradually return to its original position. If you spawn the Nimbus gun and purchase another in the Time Tower monitor, you can have two at the same time. Activating both will make your screen shake until it eventually sends you to the integer limit, which looks like this. It's very difficult to exit the level at this point, 
vehicle, so a game restart is necessary. The null body cutouts in Arena have eight unique poses. One of these poses has the null body flipping the player off. Enemies that have left the spawn area in Arena can be instantly killed by throwing them back through the barriers. The crown that the king forward wears in Arena has zero gravity. To take the crown off, carefully grab it and release it in your hand to equip it. Then simply remove it from your head. Arena has a lot of unused assets that can be viewed in the Unity Editor. The combat area has a few extra props, such as boulders and a staircase, and the empty building hidden outside of the level is populated with some props and a Ford NPC. This building is actually a part of an entire unused area, with more furnished buildings and a train cart that leads into a wooden gate. There is a message hidden above the Ramba Cube Octahedron at the end of the throne room that reads, Thanks for playing our game. Stress level zero. Instead of walking across the large chamber and throne room, you can actually use the Omniway vehicle hidden to the side after dropping down. The quarantine gate in the corner of the museum sandbox has an empty room with a functional seesaw behind it. The quarantine room, along with the ammo machine, pill machine, jukebox, collectible display case, and cannon are not in earlier versions of the sandbox. The zone debugger, however, is only found on release versions of the museum sandbox and would show the location of the player, NPC spawn points, and the location of other NPCs living or dead. The void room in the redacted chamber has a reclamation bin trigger, meaning you can claim items by throwing them into the void. If you've already reclaimed the dev manipulator, you can skip the puzzle in a redacted chamber by taking it from the scaffolding and using it to open the door. You can skip almost all of handgun course by shooting this button by the energy wall. This is useful if you want the Tuscany sandbox and don't want to play through the whole level. This isn't hidden at all, but you may have forgotten about the actual firing range inside of the handgun course. Previously reclaimed weapons will spawn inside, and the targets can be controlled by its respective lever. In the handgun course level, you can spawn the Omnis by climbing inside of the course. If you kill all of these Omnis and then start the trial, the first room will become populated, but the rest of the course will be empty, making it impossible to complete. Looking at Tuscany in the Unity Editor, we can find some unused targets and ships that were supposed to go in large circles in the water. The butterflies in Tuscany are grippable, so if you are careful enough, you can grab and fly around with them. There are some things hidden on the outskirts of the Tuscany sandbox, such as this void leak, the King Crablet statue, and this door, which is a reference to the ending of The Truman Show. The utility gun will always spawn in the Hover Junkers level, so if you don't have it unlocked already, you can reclaim it in the reclamation bin at the end of the level. In the first version of the Hover Junkers update, one of the Dragon Balls could be seen floating around at the distance relative to where your hands are. The stapler guns in the Hover Junkers sandbox have enough kickback that if you were to go into triple slow motion and shoot two of them at the ground, you would be able to fly upwards. There's some text outside of the map in Fantasy Arena that is visible through the entire level. The text is attached to a handle and reads, Collisionless Handle Outside the Arena. The underground area in Zombie Warehouse has a kill box for enemies that fall in, but they unfortunately do not have any pathing towards it, so you can't cheese the survival mode by hiding underground. If you perform a difficult series of glitches in lockout mode, you can enter the underground area and get the dev manipulator early. If you glitch your gun like mentioned earlier and walk up to the shutter door, you will eventually clip through. Once through, remove the gun and store the dev manipulator in your inventory. Make your way back to where the shutter is, re-equip the glitched gun, and fly upwards in the direction of the gate. Once you're on the other side, remove the glitch gun and you now have a dev manipulator without getting the green key. The train cart at the end of Warehouse will continue on even if you die. Staying in the train cart without using the Nimbus gun will cause you to hit the low trigger, 
but if you set the additional underscore resource files to read only in the game's save folder, the load triggers will not function and you can stay on the train cart forever.